Okay, you ready to start this show? Uh, your host of the evening is a really funny dude. Um, I forgot his last name, but I've seen him before. He's really funny. Uh, give it up for Mike. Coming to you live on tape from the lucky 13th floor of a commercial high rise in beautiful Beverly Hills, adjacent California. From the studios of Sirius XM West, boasting an obstructed view of the world famous Hollywood sign, this is The Tully Show. I am your host, Mike Tully. Joining me once again this week, returning from parts unknown, the people's champ, Jesse Mapaluso. <laughs> am I really the people's champ, or is that just, are you just saying that to make me feel good? Well, I gotta say something. A, and B, mm-hmm. in that opening. People um, like you. I, I, th- I think they do. And if they don't, you know, that's fine as well. If you're living for the likes of strangers, you're just going to be, you know, living a lonely life. Well. This microphone smells like Mark McGrath. He has that effect on microphones. He really does. He, he probably <laughs> is, is really good at putting a scent on medical equipment. Or, I mean, technical equipment. What the fuck? Not medical. Technical. He's very pheromony. Yeah. Very pheromo- pheromony. Apparently debunked, by the way. Pheromones. Not real. According to who? Well, how, who said that they worked in the first place? But you're just making a, a statement. They did a they did a study on they like uh, I think they had like people jerk off and then they like waved um, uh, t-shirts in front of their nose and some of them had been worn by Bruce Springsteen and some of them hadn't. <laughs> you fucker! The I'm sitting here like no, it's what tr- are, something like that. What it's are true. you no, talking about? Like true. They tried. They they put people in sexual simulated sexual s- situations and tried to uh, wave pheromones in front of them and wave placebos in front of them to see if their sexual excitement was enhanced and apparently there was no pheromone effect. But is but aren't pheromones? They're not just linked to sexual stuff. Like don't like babies give off pheromones aren't there fear pheromones i mean essentially it's just a warm those are yeah hormones but pheromones are hormones so you give off a scent okay like each has its own little there's a fear there's a fear smell right i i i I, I emit it all the time (laughs) since i've been in stand-up become i've become way more acquainted with my own (laughs) yeah it's amazing yeah what does yours smell like bergamot and like rosemary it's just a more it's just a more manly scent, like because I I have I have pretty good bo. I'm one of those. I'm one of the lucky ones. Yeah, me too. Where I can smell and you can smell me, and, and unless you just really like hate me, it's it's you know it's just it's a smell you can roll with. Yeah, in the same way. My fear bo is more like, <laughs> God, I need to upgrade to a better gym. Is it just like dusty taint? It's just, musty dusty taint. I might be getting a bit of it now. It's I like, am not. I am. There's no I way. Funny. I am sniffing your. I'm not. Wasn't going your to your good bo. I was never going to ask you to smell anything. Your fear pheromones, but the, so there's like fear pheromones. I feel like babies give off a chemical that's reaction for sure. That's supposedly a thing. I think we're talking about there's different scents that people give off because of different hormones. I believe pheromones are just the supposed like sex harem sex. Yeah, but babies have, have that have that thing which I've never totally got. I love my. Oh God. You do get it. It's it's something something switched in the past like year or two. Like I'm just sniffing babies now. I'm just like putting my nose in the crown of babies. I just strangers. Like, there's so much. They're always like a little vomity. Aren't we all? No. <laughs> you never were. You've never hung around 22 year old girls at two o'clock in the morning. We're it's all, all a little vomity. We're all vomity sometimes. Babies are always a little. It's very. I guess you're like, right. You got to really catch them out of the bath. Right out of the bath, or like, I guess yeah. First thing in the morning is like you get you get a a maglamation of mm-hmm. a potpourri of scents in the morning. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, pheromones are not. Um, but Mark McGrath's are real. Yeah, I can smell them. Yeah. I walked in on your interview. You did. I did. That was great. The on air light. Uh, means nothing. I, no, I didn't even see it. I was just like, I'm just gonna walk in into this dark closet. <laughs> this is the nice I've never studio. I've done that. It's such a nice studio. I have never. This is the good one. You should see the closet. I've never stuck you in the closet here. Before, no, how dare you? I've never. I've never been shoved in the closet. I've but done. That's funny. Some really bad interviews. I, I I get a superstitious about. I like I like this I like this room, but I also feel like I um. I'm the master of this domain. I'm on my heels. Yeah, you feel rooms. good here. You're on yeah. your throne. There's other ones where I, I I can tell. I've had some some real 
fear, and it's a very small room to get the fear stink in. Oh man, and then it just circulates in the when air. You ask Tony Shalhoub a question. He's <laughs> like, "That wasn't even English." And you're like, "You know what? You're right, Tony Shalhoub." <laughs> but we're stuck in here for 20 more minutes, so let's make um, the best of it. Has Stamos walked by these halls? No, I haven't seen Stamos you're since that one time. So fucking lucky. I cannot believe you. I'm still not over it. That is one thing I will hold against you for as long as I know you. Yeah, it's it's funny too because you know that I did realize like moments before you got here that you had that obsession and obsession. Yeah. Is it what is that what we're calling it? For sure. And <laughs> and I had to and I'm still not sure that I made the wrong call go. Wow. This means I either need to tell you he's here or I need to make it my business to make sure that you don't know that. Wow. He's here. Wow. Wow. And then I actually watched him. It's so funny. You the, watched The layout him of where we're sitting right now. I have a view that you do not have. And, and I, I saw a person walk by and I was uh-huh. like, I know what that was smell. That magnificent shadow. I know that fear smell. Yeah. <laughs> I know that those stamos pheromones. He probably smells like fresh yogurt in a field. Mm-hmm. Just like a field, like a Mediterranean yeah. field. A little, seaside field. Little dill. Yeah, a little dill. Salt air, but not fishy. Yeah. Like not fishy at all, and mm. like just like a just a little bit of tzatziki, just just a, just, a, just a musky hint of hero, <laughs> <laughs> a musky hint of hero. hero. <laughs> have you been on stage since the last time I saw you? I know you have a what, Tuesday been, like, show. Three months. It's now. been so long. I've um, been gone. I've been. I have only been here for like six days. Yeah, I get I up on you. stage once a week at my dumb little show, and then I, I get little spots here and there where I could get. Why them. do you say my dumb little show? Because sometimes nobody shows up. That don't mean it dumb. I, th- I mean, I don't know. It doesn't make it good. Well, yeah, what, we've based some, off of what? We've had some good ones. Um, like when you say, I'm not even going to bother going up because I don't even want to just do this shit for a handful of other hacky comedians like myself. You yeah, know? but, but you we've know. Had some, no, we've had some good ones. I, I, my, my stand-up is in as good a place as it's... I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah. I did a show in, in uh, Santa Barbara that was my best one yet. And Where was that at? Dude, it was, <laughs> it was... I thought we were doing it at a brewery. Which is always dangerous. But we weren't. The brewery would have been fine. I love it. I'll go back there for sure. I, I'll take any excuse to go to Santa Barbara. I'm impressed with your ability to say brewery so brewery? seamlessly. So, but it wasn't. It was in the brewery put it together but did it next door to the brewery. And mind you, there was like nobody in the brewery while we were in the room next door, which was <laughs> really, uh, it was incredibly narrow. Like, there were 50 people in it, and that was definitely beyond the legal capacity of the room. Right. And it was really, like, long ways, so you were talking to the wall, which was only maybe, like, eight feet away from you, and there's a big mirror on it. Oh, that's weird. So So you you, can see yourself? So I'm talking to... The most natural line of sight is for me to look straight ahead at myself in the mirror, but there's, like, a line of two rows going all the way from the left to all the way to the right, and then a little... That's strange. Remember the dog pound on um, Arsenio Hall's show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's, like, a little dog pound... On the side. That's weird. And when the show was over, no, I loved it. And when the show was over, um, I saw that they were moving the chairs out and putting kids like play things back in there. And I think it's a very small daycare. Oh my God. Yeah. Of all places for me, definitely not to do stand up would definitely be a child's yeah, with all a those, place where there's children. All those child pheromones. I th- That reminded me of a show I did similar like room configuration was at this place called city winery in new york city Mm -hmm. and it's a smaller room long room same thing you're looking straight in the it's so shallow that the wall is just like it's so close in front of you and everyone's spread out on either side there's no stage i'm behind me are vats of wine like all of those huge you know where the wine is essentially being made and on the other side of the wall, what I'm staring into is a main room. And uh, that particular night, it was a I was on a showcase show. I was headlining it. There was like four comics and me in the smaller room, like 50 people in this room. And on the other side was this main room, uh, and Paula Poundstone was in that room uh-huh. headlining. And it was like 300 people. And there was one door separating each room yep. that the servers used. But each time they opened the door... Yep. The sound would just pollute itself. It would come in and mine would go out and vice versa. And so if there were a quiet part in my show and a loud part in her show, it literally sounded like they were laughing in my room. That's how much the sound bled into the room. Mm-hmm. And so much so that I was, you know, I, I I tried to not be bothered by it. And then out of nowhere, Paula Poundstone comes through that door with her microphone. <laughs> she had a cordless microphone. Uh-huh. 
And she comes in and she's like, well, I don't know what this room was. She's doing her show. Her audience can't see because they're still in the other room. She leaves the stage, comes through the server door, uh-huh. and is like, what is going on in here? And I was just like, holy fuck, you're Paula Poundstone. And she's like, yeah, and you are you are funny. I can hear you're funny because during the most pivotal parts of my jokes. Oh, so you're pissing each other off. Your audience is laughing. Yeah. And we're fucking each other's timing up. She's like, I just had to come in here and see the who the fuck was in this funny ass closet. That's yeah. I, as as a veteran of many of the small broom closets at the side oh, of, of comedy venues, yes. it's it's really really it's it's one thing to bomb. It's another thing to bomb while you can hear somebody crushing. Yes, like three inches of drywall oh, away. Yeah, and then you just sort you have to make a note of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that was so I have a video of her coming in being like, I had to see what the fuck was going on in this closet. <laughs> <laughs> and then she hit on me. Uh did things got weird with her for a second. Did that just go away? I mean she had an alcohol issue, I think. I thought there was a thing with the Was there a new thing? I thought there was like kids. Mm-hmm. That was years ago. I think she might have had a little bit of too much of alcohol and went for a drive with the kids. Oh, uh, okay. Could have been something that like was? that. And I think right. she might have lost temporary custody. I they were like adopted. They're adopted, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. She's a lesbian? Is that what? Is that... She was that night. I see. No, she is. She yeah. is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely by the jackets. It's so funny how we always talk about the closeted guys who... You know, you know, eighties, seventies, what have you? Yeah, who were really just acting gay, but they never mentioned it. So we, people, I guess, adults in the room knew what was mm-hmm. going on, but the lesbians of the time weren't yeah. allowed to act like lesbians. They more dressed and acted like they were maybe um, commanders of Star Trek <laughs> ships. I thought you were going to say something <laughs> more serious. You know what I mean? Uh, you mean like, like Kate Spock's Mul- like crew? Kate, like Kate Mulgrew. Is she? Is that a person? <laughs> is that a person? <laughs> you know I what mean, I mean? We don't ever these, talk like, about the sexless... closeted lesbians. No, we don't. We don't. And that there's these... another area where women are repressed. Yeah. I have all these jokes about lesbians that I don't have the guts to do. Cause Why the... not? Because I've done stuff in front of um, gay people who are like, no. Like, well, fuck shut them. up. Anybody who comes to a show and says no, uh-huh. you obviously misread Comedy Club for church. Go to church. No. Yes. I disagree. You, so you think, think we can allow people I, to I get offended? No, 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 no. I just I, I think that um, there's it's not about it's not about offended. I okay. I've always thought that the further you go out on a limb. You just need to be good. If you're going to talk about what's the deal with you guys ever get high and eat a bunch of Girl Scout cookies, you don't really need to be that good because you're in safe territory. And as soon as right. you start tiptoeing into people's sensitive areas and cry spots, you need to... Christ spots? Cry spots. Okay, but to... You need to, you need to deliver the goods. And if I'm not delivering the goods, then uh, it's okay. I get what you're P- saying. Pete Holmes sat where you're sitting right now and Gross. told me about how. <laughs> What's wrong with him? I've seen him steal a joke. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. But we can move on. Um, it, and and told me that so much of what it's about is you're playing chicken with the audience. Yeah, I you mean, know, I is, agree is, to is, that. Who, who are you going to make blink? And I don't have the faith in my. I don't, frankly, don't possess the ability to go after. Like I love like a Sam Tripoli who can go after people where they don't want to be gone after and he can make them laugh and he can win them over do you know why he can why you tell me why you think he can why do you think sam can do what he does looking the way he does as a white man he he there's no subject white 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 adjacent he's off (laughs) that's off sub that's off you know yeah limits to him so why do you think he can in your opinion and i'll tell you what i think i think it's because he is people think he's coming from a, a, a good natured place and even if he is talking about taboo stuff he was going after some gay couple at this show I did the other night and basically the two guys looked exactly alike and he's just talking about how they were dating each other <laughs> people know a lot he's of people, do people know he's good natured um, I mean this is just kind of shit I've sort of gleaned about how comedy works he's already set himself up as like the butt of jokes so he's not looking down on people right. I, I'm an asshole so I can call you I can make fun of l- little element asshole elements of you because yes. I'm I'm just an asshole. Right. And I think because he has a really big uh he's got really good energy, he's really confident on stage, really comfortable on stage, he's seen it all and and he has a, a bag of tricks 
that at his disposal yeah. that he can work his way through that are very apt to to work to allow him to achieve that. Right. And I have like none of those things. Well, do you know, you're absolutely 100 percent about right. You're right about all that. One thing you're missing his conviction. Yeah. Right. Like. But I know I, conviction I think, is something you can that you can fake. Well, maybe some it is. Can. It's all most. It's not that you fake it. I mean, you take you take a comedian like Robin Williams, who had his energy over and over and over and over. He recreated that energy over and over and over. Was it fake, or did he just get really good at recreating energy? I mean, obviously, you mix in the recipe of his talent level, some cocaine during those years, yeah, and you know his his ability to just be in the moment that provides that sort of result, but. Essentially, it's an act, you know, and, and I think someone like Sam Tripoli, and to the effect of what you're saying about your, your lesbian jokes, if you go up there and say it with conviction, without wavering, in, in that you believe it, that yeah. you believe what you're saying, you can say anything you want. I agree with all that, and, and, and someday I will. You will. Yeah. I've seen you, and to the effect of good... Dude, I've seen every, and you, I'm sure you have too, every big comedian fucking fail because you can't, you, you aren't good until you're good. And the only way to get that way is in front of people. So right. essentially every joke sucks at some point. Yeah, right. You know? I've gotten way better at, at uh, um, I, I feel like I'm over the first critical hump of where I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'd feel great about 400 people who paid good money screaming at me that I suck. I don't know that I'm necessarily in that, but like to get up in a little club at my show in LA and have people not laugh at stuff, I don't, I'm perfectly comfortable with And that. that's good. You know, that's it's a, a cool, huge it's a cool hump. place to be. It is a huge that's hump. That's a huge yeah. hump. Right. And you know, it's not that you don't care. It's that you're like, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Right. You exactly. know, you're going to get through it. And, it. and it can actually be sort of enjoyable in a weird way. Enjoyable? And that's another thing Pete Holmes yeah. told me sitting here was if you're enjoying your own jokes, if you legitimately think that you're being funny, then it's great if other people want to join in on that. Yeah. But when you, when you, because you can see people sometimes when they put it out there and they're like, oh, idiot, you knew that wasn't funny and you still fucking said it. <laughs> it's so you, awkward. You can't win when you do that, you know? When no. you're just like, I. That's great that you don't agree, but I happen to think that what I just said is really, really funny. I'm not angry at you, but yeah. like, okay, we'll just move on here. That's you a have very, to think what you're saying is funny. It's nice. This the the fear stink lessens quite a bit. That's yeah, not, I might. I can have. I can occasionally have one of those and still not have like the the nasty sweaty pits when I get off. Dude, and it's gonna it, when you're sweating in the cold. Yeah, oh. you know. Yeah, you literally have your it's raw freezing fear. and you're sweating. It has nothing to do with temperature. It only has to do with your insides freaking out. It's yeah. all purely mentally, you know, originated up here. No. But I feel like I was talking with Rogan a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about comedy and he's like he said something to the uh to us talking about like having it all figured out, you know, like as far as stand up goes. And he's like, I don't have it figured out. Anyone who says they've got it figured out is lying. Like we're all just sort of figuring out, it out as we go. Yeah. You know, it's 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 not something that can truly be mastered. Well, it's a moving target. It is. Right. It's a, an evolving thing. And I think that's why it's so, it's become so enticing for people, you know, stand up and like just getting those laughs. For me, it's not even about like, it's about connecting. It really is. I was trying to figure that out. Like, why, why am I doing this? Especially, like, just going through everything that I've been through. You know, it, it, figuring out if this is, like, am I going to, am I sticking with this? Is this what I want to do? And yeah. it, it truly is uh, based off of the sole aspect of connecting with people on my ideas and my thoughts. I think that's a, that's a, it's something that's really, it can be a powerful tool and it can be, it can be something that really helps people as cheesy and simple as that sounds. Mm -hmm. I, I've learned that about myself and my stand up that, you know, if I can like affect a couple people in a positive way, especially, especially through some dark shit, that feels pretty good. Have you thought about, you must have, um, if you had to, if you decided the juice was no longer worth the squeeze and you wanted to get out of the industry, what you would? I'd raise llamas mm. professionally. That's uh, it's a lot of money in that. Huge. Have you ever? I mean, very, I'm very competitive, as I'm sure. It's a you very know. competitive business. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of llama fur? Do you own an alpaca sweater? Uh, are we going to do the Menescalco thing? <laughs> alpaca. Alpaca. <laughs> 
alpaca. Do you know my wife just went to China and came back with these little fur balls that they're like these little trinkety things. She got you gremlins. <laughs> now the crazy thing is when you say after midnight, are we talking Chinese time or American? We need I, to know what Because I have to feed them. Because these little buggers are hungry. <laughs> I need to know what time zone we're talking about here. Uh Because your midnight and my midnight are two different midnights. They're remaking Critters, I think. Wow. They've (laughs) remaked... You fucker. Well, okay, so what did your wife, what hairy she balls these, did she bring back she from China? She got these tiny little hairy balls that like uh, <laughs> annoying people would hang off of their uh, purses. So you're nuts. And, and, and do you know what? She showed me the exact, not similar, exact ones for sale um, for like with designer labels on them for like $900. She bought them for $4. In China? Yeah. They're actual fur. They're real fur. What kind of fur? And what do you do? You hang them off your purse? They're just, they're just a couple hairy nuts? They're fobs. No, it's like just like a poofy, cute, whatever. Front of building? Hmm? <laughs> fobs? I have a key fob. It's a front of building fob. I don't know what fob actually means. You but just you said know, it's just fob. Like a, it's a thing. Like It's just got a little like clasp on it, and you would just hang it off. Oh, of, I've seen those. You know? It's a little strange to have like hairy balls hanging off your bag. Chicks and children just like having like goofy, colorful shit hanging yeah. off everything. It's a little feminist, if you think about it. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> fight for my right to act like a fourth grader it's just i think like you know a woman hanging two little hairy balls off her purse that could be a political statement yeah your wife could be sending you subliminal messages about your manhood oh are you kidding me she fucking alphaed me like the day we met how she's just so i got bad stand-up about this too um will you stop deprecating yourself i have good i have good stand-up too i but i have i have many more jokes that aren't really stage worthy than i do things that are (laughs) So I have this massive file of things that are like I get that yeah, you know I got an idea because she she yeah like she's handy she owns tools I do not she owns a pink set of tools I, I had don't... a pink set of tools as well yeah you seem like a can do lady as well I'm a can do lady right for the most part you there's a bunch of stuff I can't do for example car stuff no I can't do that I don't know about changing tires I don't know about checking the oil I don't I know about anything I could go in to I could go to the gas station to get gas. And be charged fifteen thousand dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, "Yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> See, the difference though is there are different cultural expectations. Like, because if I go to a hardware store, I'm I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sweating. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to like be I think dumb. It's one of the, it's it's very that's it's, interesting. It's very much the corollary of um, dudes get all the credit in the world for being somewhat from strangers for being somewhat capable parents, right? And we assume that women should if they should have uh, they should be maternal by nature. Should, be, should have mothering mastered. But yeah, if you go to a hardware <laughs> store and you go, I'm looking for a, I mean, I can't even make up a pretend An Allen term. wrench. <laughs> right. That's a start. I want to piss myself. That might be the most basic thing. You can ask for a Home Depot. Hi. Hi. Do you have you a Allen wrenches? saw? <laughs> I need a saw and a two by four. <laughs> oh my god! I just like the microphone. Mark McGrath and I are married. Yeah, yeah. You guys. Know. Yeah, we're totally in love. We've got something in common. He's such a nice HPV. <laughs> His wife definitely gave him HPV. I. I we've would, all given each other HPV. Apparently, we've all had it. He's a time. nice fella. Of course, he is. I love that you guys are like radio besties, but not in real life. You guys ever get coffee? We've never. That's what I thought. Never taken it that. You level. and I still haven't. So maybe your friends only exist try- in I keep this on closet. Our... Am I bothering you? I feel like I. Hell no. Okay. No. 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 Because I can't tell. Because a lot of times we communicate mm-hmm. through electronic means. Oh. I, I feel like I'm. I feel like I seem needy to you. No, you're good. You're consistent and you're concise. Okay. And you know the one thing that bothers me, and this is just you know a. a is all the communication portals like people sending you bookings on Instagram and your DMs and then trying to like book you in the comments and then like a Facebook message you get booked in comments it, there's just first of all it must be nice to be wanted but secondly what the fuck <laughs> it's just there's too many I miss stuff and so it's yeah. good when you emails man you know on. hit me up let's be professional yeah emails. you called me unprofessional 
Is it because I walked into your studio with the red light flashing in my face that said on air? That was the most recent time I accused you of being Okay, what other times? Uh, have I done it? No, you uh, didn't accuse me, but what other times have I been unprofessional Oh, to you? you flaked the last time we were going to do this. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Maybe you were maybe you're grown and sexy. I don't know. Was I grown and sexy? <laughs> I don't know if you were busy so, being grown and sexy. Did it, We had a thing scheduled that... Did and did I miss it the morning of? I, I sent, did. I remember you really that. Don't remember how much no, we do smoke. It was like that last. It was like the la, It was like a Friday, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I sent you a reminder like a day before, and you didn't respond. Yep. So morning of, I sent the unprofessional text going, just making sure. And you're like, yeah. Oh, I had a I had a little bout of being very run down after traveling from Japan and then coming home and having three days off and then going to four or five different states. And the, in the middle of filming, I was filming a pilot. In, um, I mean, this is an excuse. I'm constantly working on improving my my professionalism because, you know, being a comedian, you have to be. You, there's so many areas. If you want to be successful, you've you can't. It's not just on the stage. Yeah. There's different areas where you have to like step up your game. And truthfully, as someone on on the outside looking in, it would I think it would be a really huge advantage to any comic to actually handle their shit professionally because so many comics are not capable of doing. Yeah, that. and then because they're just... because they're fuck ups because they've never actually had a real job in yeah. their lives. I think the person who can actually handle their their shit that's a huge leg up. Oh hell yeah, it is. Particularly in your life, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and um, I I got E. coli when what? I was filming a pilot. Wait, that's like an actual. I thought that was just a thing that the news made up to scare me people. too. No, I I looked it up. I went to the urgent care uh-huh. two days when I was filming in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I was filming a pilot for E. A, f- a couple weeks ago, and man, did that wipe me out. Did you get some bad lettuce. I mean, I must have licked a doorknob or had a bad slice of romaine. There's so many ways you can get it. Say your kid has it. Mm-hmm. Say your beautiful, cherubic angel daughter is riddled with E. coli right now. Just millions and millions and millions and millions of gross bacteria in her gut that are just waiting to fall out and infect you. Say she has it. She plays with her toys. Yeah. And then you don't like clean up properly and touch her toys. And then you fin- you know, you put your finger in your mouth. Yeah. You could get it. Right. That's how contagious it is. It's just yeah, like no, anything else. I only else. touch my child with gloves on. <laughs> As you should, because they are riddled with yeah. all sorts of microbial issues that are not- She has the most impressive snot rockets of any human being Does I've she? ever met. She had one the other day. She's had multiple ones like this. One was like a proper thick hanger protruding under- the lip. Oh God! And that's just one side, Jesse. The other side, she has a bubble that, with every breath, is like going out and retracting. Like it's like it's keeping a fire going. It, yeah, like it's yeah, a cho- right. choking a fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the fire inside of her. And uh, and bless her heart, completely. And then they get pissed when you try to wipe their nose. Why? Are, She's really snotty. Babies are really snotty. I was just gonna say. Here's a question. I don't know. Why are babies so mucusy? Because mucus is not healthy. We're not supposed to be mucusy. Really? No. Mucus is a is a reaction to inflammation. That's okay. why we have here's, buildup of it. Here's what I think. I think that um I love how we give half ass shitty medical advice every time we're in case together. you're wondering what's wrong with your baby. Here's what's up. <laughs> Babies, cuz did you know this um I every time my boobs. every time you get a cold, there's like 10,000 different cold variations, common cold. That's why they'll never cure it. Of course. It's it's like 10,000 different things. Every time you get one, you're immune to that one for the rest of your life. Cool. But there's still thousands left, so you keep on getting colds forever. Okay. okay. So here's what I think is happening. Babies have like no immunities to anything. So she is- Reacting to everything. She's constantly getting micro sick, but- her immune system is so strong, she's constantly beating everything. Right. So- Because everything's trying to kill you the moment you're born. Exactly. Got so it. So she is constantly fighting the good fight. So she's, she's She-Ra. Every little baby girl's She-Ra. I mean, I didn't watch She-Ra. I guess I will now. You, He-Man? Of course. Well, he- She-Ra is the, yeah, the his the, bitch. The, the, yeah, but I she shouldn't say own. that. That's totally like anti-feminist, right? She was like her own powerful I call, force. I called my daughter a bitch on Instagram story the other day, and I feel like people have been divided on. <laughs> <laughs> what was the context? Took her to brunch. Took this bitch to brunch. She's chilling. <laughs> she's hanging out. It's a beautiful day. It's a really nice outdoor brunch. Perfect <laughs> weather. And we hand her a piece of bread, and she's just chilling on on a piece of bread. Yeah. And I just put a picture up her, and I wrote, bitches who brunch. <laughs> 
and people and are you did you get messages people are like wow you're really gonna call your daughter a bitch huh Who sa- did somebody send you did someone dm you yeah here it was and this is i took many but it was like that i mean let me see this oh my god she's, dude she's stupid yeah i know she's really dumb she's just chilling out she's having a great time she can finally sit in like a, a high chair so she's hanging out she wants to have what you know she doesn't want bottles she wants food so we hand her a little thing and she's just chilling and i'm like she's like she her wrists she looks like a like a disney character she has wrists not really <laughs> her arms look like legs i want to bite every little piece of flesh okay, off i'm of her so arm. interested in this phenomenon of of uh here's- aggression uh, here's another bad joke I haven't done. Um, the the to me that is the ultimate manifestation of white privilege. Wanting to eat babies. Yeah, is how many strangers, white ladies, oh, just- feel comfortable walking up to me at Trader Joe's and going, "I would just eat her face." <laughs> You know, here's, and then walking away. I think- can you imagine if a black dude came up to me at Trader <laughs> Joe's and was like. I could I just gnaw on that thigh all day <laughs> and then just racist. boom down to the you're racist why why because the thigh is like chicken meat is that why oh he'd pick the, cha- the thigh <laughs> I just wanted to change the punchline I had I to know. pick a different part of the body I, know. I, I can't it, I could have said eat her ass that's true and that would have been more appropriate <laughs> that would have been, way, that would have been way more appropriate even though technically probably a more delicious cut of baby <laughs> such the bet if you're gonna eat a part of a baby yeah Go for the chunky butt. Best meat's in a rump. Best meat is at science. <laughs> that is science. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a whole joke about cute aggression. I think, like, cute aggression's a real thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Cute aggression is what you're, it's basically like the urban dictionary term for what you're describing. People mm-hmm. wanting to just punch things that are cute. Oh. Older women, grandmas. Don't you remember grandmas? Every grandma takes your cheek skin and they fucking twist it because they want to rip it off because you're they so do. cute. Yeah. Don't you remember grandmas doing that? They do. And they just like squeeze you and pinch you and like lick their finger and wipe your face. Like, yeah. It's just, I think it's, there's some science to cute things invoking a, you know, a micro anger reaction inside of us. Like a cute puppy or a baby makes you kind of fucking angry. I, I, yeah, no, I, I understand the the side I'm of it Google that's, it for that's you. I'm it, that's so cute I can't stand it. It's it's a but real it's, thing, but it's a slightly different thing. And then I suffer from, and it's getting worse. And I need to do something about it. Um, constant uh, fantasies of violence towards people that I'm indifferent towards. Oh, you have fantasies of violence. That'd be a it, that'd be a great follow up to history of violence. I just. Like, like when there's just like moms at school dropping kids off, and someone's just like sitting there, not paying attention uh, to me, and I'm walking past, and they're like right at elbow level, and I'm like, what if I just delivered this? Like everyone amazing has that. elbow right now. Everyone, every single. I was thinking about it this. Would just actually, be the mo- I talked to Bert Kre- Kreischer about it years ago, and yeah. he was saying that Patrice was was a particularly, you know, struggle like like don't hand me your baby. Don't you know what I'm going to do? Don't you know what I'm going to do? Can I read you the aggression? Yeah, please. A dish definition cute aggression is superficially aggressive behavior caused by seeing something cute, such as a human baby or young animal. People experiencing cute aggression may grit their teeth, clench their fists, or feel the urge to pinch and squeeze something they consider cute while actually not causing or intending any harm. Right. And you, you don't, don't you don't actually want to do it. That's the point of all no, this. No, but to your to the point of what you're describing. Oh, I know what it is. Like I but I'm saying like I had this thought yesterday that every single one of us is capable of murder. Every human mm-hmm. is capable of murder. Well, even more than you might be thinking, I just finished this great oral history of World War II, and there's just a number of people who are like I was just a kid from wherever and I was patriotic and we were going to fight the war and win the war and it was scary to me and a lesson I could never unlearn of how you could turn a bunch of nice kids from the Midwest into it, not that you could turn them into killers but kind of how easily you could turn them into oh, killers oh yeah I mean how you can just that's what they do yeah. now when you say oral history what is that referring to did someone tell you a story <laughs> <laughs> when I say I read a book I met an old man <laughs> I went to the coffee shop and talked to Merle. No, all they did is, in, in oral history, is they talked to the people who lived it, and they just tell their... Nobody nobody takes all of their 
stories and assembles them into the day where it was a cold, blustery morning on right. Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. It's just literally, it starts with a guy saying, I worked on Pearl Harbor and I was on my way to work one day and all of a sudden we all heard the explosion. That's kind of cool. And that guy tells his story of his little piece of World War II. That's pretty it cool. Goes, it's amazing. It's yeah, amazing. that's a good way to kind of, you know, well, essentially before books, that that those that's how people- That's all we had. That's all we had. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine how I was thinking that too, like bef- back, way back, before technology, before industrial revolution, before any caveman shit, mm-hmm. you just had to listen to people talk. It just was podcast all day. It's all it was was just people telling long ass fucking stories. Yeah, I you wonder had no about escape. that. I wonder about that because we were talking about this on my other show. I brought it up. Like whenever I watch westerns, they always make it seem like people in the old west who had no diversions also didn't speak. Yeah, but that's also based off of people who didn't really live in the west. So it's all speculation. You know, don't you think like people talked a lot? I mean, not I ca- obviously so. not caveman times because language hadn't quite been formed to a, yeah. a a sophisticated level. But once we started chatting, you don't think bitches were chatty back then? I guess so. High I noon. Hope so high noon, very little speaking. But somebody really coming, somebody's coming to town to kill everybody, right? In yeah. Someone's t- coming to town now. Yeah, currently. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. What are you like? Do you have any sort of like hypochondria? tendencies like yeah yeah i do what do you I what do you do. think about what's your biggest fear besides like failing on stage which you uh, are that's saying not, that's not it's my, already happening that's not my but it's fear. happening all the time it's happening every day but i'm not afraid of it but right but it happens we can right, smell exactly it. We but, can I'm also... gonna, but i'm gonna do a show tonight and it's gonna be hard we can all smell it i'm gonna see you tonight and then next week yeah, yeah, yeah i'll yeah, be well, smelling your fear by the time people uh, see this i will have already bumped with, with your with your wife's grace i'll be sniffing your fear that's right uh biggest like, fear i don't i don't know that i i like being attacked? No, that- no. I'm 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 blissfully unprepared for that. Sometimes I think about should I kind of think of what I would do, and and then I can I get bored and think about something else. <laughs> no. Um, my biggest issue at the time, and I've brought this up from time to time here, is I think I do do so much stuff that I get burned out, and then I can't really like my brain doesn't work as well as I need it right. to for for sometimes weeks and even like months at a time, and. It's hypochondria because I've been to actual doctors and they've been like, "There's nothing like we're there's not, nothing wrong." We're with not you. saying that you're not experiencing what you're experiencing. Can I call you your not- doctors and see if they're like actual, qua- actually qualified? Because if they say there's nothing wrong with you, I I would like to give a second opinion. Oh, because there's a bunch of things wrong with yeah, me. Yeah, I see. Okay, yep. yeah, I'll give them. The, I'll give them. Hey, I'm going to start with your footwear, but it's what's wrong with you, and it's also what's right about you. What's wrong? I'm getting new slippers. You walk in life in slippers. Yeah. So it's like it's on ones. the cusp of being so wrong that it's right. Why? They're nice slippers. <laughs> I got the good. I wouldn't come here. I, w- I wouldn't come here in like shitty Sunday morning I, God slippers. You actually improved your your slipper game. Is that These a, are the exact same ones that? Yeah, that's peanut butter. Is and that jelly a Tupperware of bread on the floor? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Where's your man sack? It's right there. Oh, there it is. I was hoping you had your dad pack with you. <laughs> I have everything. I know. We that talked about your dad time. pack. Yeah. You know? Can I ask you a personal question? Please. Because you're talking about brain fog and all of that. Yeah. What's your diet normally like? It's pretty good, actually. Um, I'm looking at that sandwich, and I don't think it looks pretty good to me. Really? You got white bread on there, which is full of sugar, which is going to spike your glucose, which yeah, that's, creates that's, mucus in your brain. That's real. Um, that's your brain fog. That's I a have, brain fog I make, sandwich. It, it actually is. It actually yeah. really is. I... um. I'm pretty good. I'm I'm really pretty good. I I have a delicious uh, vegan <laughs> vegetable protein shake for breakfast every That's morning. Good. That's all I have for breakfast, and yeah, I'll I'll let myself have like a peanut butter and jelly or a tuna sandwich for lunch, and then you know I live my mother in law's around. She cooks. It's oh, that's like, right. She so is she there forever now. Not forever, dude. She's been it's there a, for it's a op- hot it's op- minute. I hadn't noticed. Um, did you, so wait when your when your wife went back to China to buy the hairy balls? Did mom go with her? No, I was. Uh, I was you were alone with, stuck in the house with baby and seven year old. How is that not your first fear? Well, that, I mean, how did you not? It was come better, out the gate with that. It was better than the time we did the exact same thing like three weeks ago. Oh my! Yeah, nightmare. Mm-hmm. Holy hell! Is she like traditional? She's Chinese. Or Japanese, Japanese. Okay, I mean, I didn't what, know. Like, like kimono? No, nah, not not is she like serving? Not is she coming out like a geisha? <laughs> but know. is she? Does she? Does she put I on? A, I, I bought mean, a kimono. 
Yeah, you got it when you're over I, yeah, there. I did. Right? Yeah. A, a, a purple one for 20 bucks. Yeah. I put it on sometimes it's and I authentic. just shuffle around the fucking living room <laughs> and I serve my dog's tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tiny little steps. But is she like a traditional Japanese woman? Um, I, I guess. Is kind she, of. She lived in Milwaukee for 30 years. Oh, well, so. fuck it. Yeah, yeah she's, yeah, yeah. you know, she's like, she's blended. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's got the culture blend. Yeah, yeah. Um, but gr- greatest fear thing, I don't really know that I, I, the problem is this. Tell me. I believe that everybody has a quota in their brain of like how much percentage of the time they need to be kind of like worked up about stuff. And if you don't have, and I think that's sort of been proven, if you don't have real problems, you will invent oh, of course. problems. You know, the brain needs to solve stuff. Exactly. As we all know, we don't really have problems relative to many people on earth yeah. and many people throughout the more barbaric parts of human history. Um, I don't really have a lot of problems. I'm really happy to say. That's but good. The because one, of that. You never get past the existential one. Oh, yeah, no. The payoff Ugh. The payoff for ridding yourself, and I wouldn't say, I'm, I, I, I actually think I'm less death obsessed than I was a couple of years ago, but the payoff for getting rid of small problems is getting the big problem. Yes. We're all going to die. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, w- when my dad passed, so much of the little things that were bothering me dissipated. Yeah. Like, just like that, into thin air. The stuff that I was worried about and stressing about, I, I don't give a fuck anymore. People, yeah. places, or things, they all just melted away. Once you have those like big things that really sort of give you a true perspective, yeah. That you know, I mean, right. I think we all have a tad well, of the and then death just, fear. It, of course, how can you how can you not to be human is to know that you're going to die. Yeah. You well, know? well, there you go, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so I might as well have a fucking peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, no, it's it's. I don't think it's dietary shit. And I, I'm I, the problem is I will cut drugs and alcohol out entirely for months at a time, and I will assume the payoff is going to be that I'll be super clear headed and and lucid. And yeah, that, and that doesn't always happen. And then that's frustrating. When really? You go, well, I've done everything right, and there's nothing really left for me. I, I mean, I also haven't slept straight through the night in seven, eight months. I Sleep mean, is vital, man. Those basic things are vital. Yeah. Right, right, right. Erica Badu says you got to visit all the doctors. You got to get Doctor Greens, which is nutrition. Yeah. Doctor Sleep, Doctor Nutrition, uh, Doctor Nature, mm-hmm. Doctor Spirit. And then one other doctor I can't remember. Erica Badu is a very talented Sun. musician and uh, an absolute crazy person. Well, I mean, aren't we all a little bit crazy? Not like Erica Badu. <laughs> why? Why is she particularly crazy? Uh, I guess I have her and Lauren Hill kind of conflated in my brain. Well, they, you know, they did both come out of that neo soul era of music, so yeah. they definitely were on the airwaves simultaneously. Mm-hmm. And I think, and then they both refused to play the game, and then they both kind of disappeared as a result of it. Yeah. I get that. I don't know if that's has craziness. Some Badu has some, I feel like Badu's had some stuff. What's your greatest fear? Um, you know, I guess, I mean, death is up there for sure. Right. I think just losing people. Uh-huh. You know, just people going away kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. But then again, if everyone stuck around forever, they'd get annoying and nothing would be special. Well, who would want to live forever, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, depends on how much money you got. Really? I mean, wouldn't you like to see every single place in the world? Every single, if you could go yes. to every single place once, yeah, on a I, hot air balloon ride with unlimited mushrooms and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you wouldn't hop on with your fucking dad sack and your slippers, you little minx and your hairy balls hanging off your purse. You know me too. That your well. wife got you from China. Okay, I, I'm bored. I'm no longer Wikipediaing Erica Badu. <laughs> What do you want to know about her? I don't know. I thought that she had some. I read some New Yorker. I think you're profile. confusing her no, about. I read, I read some New Yorker thing, and and I was like, right, she's kind of crazy. She, you know, I I wouldn't. I would call her eccentric. Plus, she had a a falling out with um. It was Andre three thousand right? Yes. Okay. Well, then I, I thought it was Big Boy for a second. If you have a falling out with Big Boy, I think it's your problem. If you have a falling <laughs> out with Andre three thousand, I'm going to need to hear some more specifics. I think. I think. Uh, I I wouldn't call her crazy. I would say eccentric. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think she's a, line. musically a, a genius. I saw her live, and I was just like, "Damn!" Yeah, she's. She, my mouth was open the whole show. She's very, very talented. Yeah, she. What'd is. you do to your face? Uh, a laser situation that reacted very sensitively. I'm like a hot tomato right now. Mm-hmm. I look like Freddy Krueger's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm. You know what I am? I'm. I'm freshly out of the burn unit from UCLA. That's what this is. Wow. Yeah. How so? It's a derm situation. I oh went in. Goodness. He's like, "We got to fix some of your stuff," and I was like, "All right." Mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm just like, "Sure." That's what I get for smoking a joint and going to my dermatologist. Oh, I just was like, "Yeah, go ahead, get in there, mm-hmm. zap it all off, bro." Mm-hmm. 
Zapskis. So he zapped me, and I've been inside like a mole because I the sunlight will just burn me alive. Oh, no. I mean, whatever. It's an indulgent thing, you know? How long does this... Hope probably going to last another couple of weeks or so. I'm just going to... No. Be, no, in just a few days. Oh, okay. Yeah, just a few days. Okay. But I like scaring people. Yeah. I've been going up to children in like the grocery store line and like different stores and just being like, hey, I'm going to eat your face. I'm going to eat your face. You're so cute. Your face is going to look like mine after I eat you. I'll swallow your tongue. How was Japan? What did you get up to over there? E. coli. <laughs> I thought that was Chattanooga. I mean, Chattanooga was right after Japan. I'm, I'm speculating. I, I contracted it in Japan. Oh, I went to an emergency room in Japan. Oh, what was that like? Awesome. Dude, do they... What? Well, how is it awesome? I mean, of course it wasn't awesome, but it's just this thing that we all know that everybody's so up in arms about our healthcare system. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, the fact of the matter is... I went to Japan and I went to a baseball game and they had all this weird ballpark food. Oh, and fuck. And so we were... It all starts with ballpark food. So we... I did not eat all of everything, but since I was with a fairly large group of people, we ordered many things and I had some of everything. Right. And then that night I started having like weird fever dreams and it was the closest I've ever experienced to what it would be like to die, although I was nowhere, anywhere near death we you have like sweats, Sweat, temperature, cold, the whole thing. I sharding. Keep, keep having the same. Were you sharding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my yeah, uh, you my, were my, my sharding my, in a kimono. My wife's grandmother had um, <laughs> a thing on her toilet roll that every time you pulled it, and it's the middle of the night. Oh, I don't made a noise. No. No. I mean, like seven thousand times in one night. <laughs> And that is, I think so at a certain funny. point, at a certain point, I think my wife realized that I was like more than a little bit. There was something wrong. Yeah, with like me. you're beyond food poisoning. So I went out into the um, to the living room area, <laughs> and I just remember. Now they're in a, a big building. We're fourteen floors up. They're on the top Fuck. floor building. But it's so Not quiet good for sharks. It's so quiet in the the city. I hear an ambulance, and I'm like, "Is that for me?" And they're like, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. And I'm like, oh, whoa, they got an, I'm dying. <laughs> what the fuck? Also, I am a classical musician. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, that's really why your wife called the ambulance. He's, he's in there playing classical. He's obsessed. And uh, it turns out that it's just people don't have cars there. So getting an ambulance there is just not that big of a right big of a deal but yeah like the ambulance guys came into the apartment and they put me on a thing and carried me out and took me to the hospital and they just gave me a bunch of ivs and i don't think they ever really figured out food poisoning whatever but the whole thing that the ambulance the the treatment i think out of pocket for somebody who didn't have insurance was like a hundred dollars that's it and was it good treatment yeah, of course it was. I'm fine. Did you, you actually? Know, they didn't to, leave anything the, inside of you. No, I've been to that emergency room twice. My kid, we find out he was allergic to babies. Get allergic to wheat, and then they grow out of it. Yeah, yeah, because wheat is gross. We found out that he was. Yeah, we found out that he was uh, an allergic, an allergy wheat baby over there. So I've actually been to that emergency room twice. Wow. Yeah. So people just it's a it's a filthy place. It's got really bucks. good really good press. But you went there, and, so I've been sick there. My kid's been sick there. You've been sick there. I mean, I do, mean, do the math. Yeah, do the math, folks. Stay in Wichita. <laughs> <laughs> the sum of that is to stay in Wichita. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I got E. coli there, but the food was delicious. I mean, sushi was 90 cents a plate, so I probs got co- E. coli from there. Yeah. Whenever you know? you're bragging about how cheap your sushi was, it's I don't never have a good. lot of sympathy for yeah. what happens to your tum-tum. Hey, the last time we have like two minutes left. The last time you were here, uh, you wanted to talk about why vibrators are good and bad. Do you remember what the hell that was about? Vibrators are good and bad because they're good because they get the job done quick. They're bad because they get the job done quick. You're not oh. connecting yeah. your mind, body, and soul to your pussy hole. Oh, that's really interesting. This this transcends um, gender. Yes. Because guys, guys definitely, it is it is not good. I think masturbation's great. It is not good for if you have or want to have a sex life. It is not good to jerk off the way most guys yeah. jerk off. Yeah, you desensitize is, yourself. You can do it really, really easily. Also, guys can lose endurance from... You if, can lose dick endurance? If your dick gets used to, as soon as it gets hard, it just comes because you can oh, do that. Oh, that's right. That's actually, your, your body starts to... Yeah. Dicks are Pavlovian like that. I think I have low... Vaginal endurance. 
I think that's a good thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah that probably is a good thing. That's right. A, that's pro- yeah, that's probably a good thing. There's a lot of things where the double standards for gender work against women, very obviously. But, oh, yeah, of course. But that is one big win for womankind that I, you don't have to worry about. I would say for womankind, I think it would behoove you to learn how to squirt. Because it is possible. Did I Googled you, it, did, did I learned le- it, and I did it. Yeah? Yeah. Was that, I mean, what, what'd you get out of that? Empowerment. Really? Dehydration. I a was... feeling of accomplishment because I like, you know, I looked up information, I applied it, and I achieved it. And also connecting to my body. Squirting? You got one body. You're, you're yeah. not connecting to your body unless you squirt. I was with a I'm natural. I'm not saying that you're not connecting. I was with a natural connecting. born squirter, and all all it really meant was who's sleeping in the wet spots. <laughs> it's always going to be you. <laughs> You're, you're always you're, going to be sleeping in the wet spot. You squirt your side. Yeah, the, the sisterhood of the traveling squirters. If once you figure out you're with the squirter, you make sure that <laughs> the action happens on her side of the bed. I'm just saying as a woman, I think you could really learn a lot by yourself by squirting. And I think it's just the way you should, you know, empower the pussy with a little squirt. It's deep. Uh, we got to go. <laughs> Enjoy your PB&J, you weirdo. I miss you. Uh, nice to see you. Yeah. Where can people find you? Uh, JessieMay.com, Sharp Tongue Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, SoundCloud and Google Play, Queefy May on Twitter. and uh, Classy. Every Wednesday, I'm uh, doing a live broadcast to raise awareness for Alzheimer's called Are you? Weeds Day. Oh, yeah. On Instagram and Facebook Live at 420 Pacific. Tune in. I answer questions and I blaze up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>